that just makes me think of some like Karen soccer mom yelling at her kids outside Panera. Jaden, Brayden, Kaden, get over here right now. You're in big trouble, mister. What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty and this is the Punk Rock NBA. Once upon a time, if you wanted to be a professional musician, it was simple. You bought a guitar or a drum set or whatever, then you joined a band, you played shows, someone came to your show or heard a demo, they signed you, and that was that. But that model is dead and it has been for at least a decade. It's glaringly obvious to everybody and yet rock artists are still desperately clinging to it. And honestly, it kind of makes me afraid for the future of the genre especially if you compare it to the insane rise of artists like Corpse and Jaden and all the other people who are blowing up on the back of the TikTok ecosystem. Corpse put out his first song, I think like six months ago, and he's already got over 50 million streams on Spotify alone without a band and without ever even playing a single show. This is the new model. Modern artists who are not just musicians, they're more like influencers slash creators who happen to also make music. In this video, I'm gonna look at exactly how Corpse and Jaden did it and talk about what rock artists can and really must learn from them. I wanted to listen to Corpse's new song. It has emojis in the name, that's how you know it's cool. Let's start with Corpse. He started out as a faceless, anonymous YouTuber called Corpse Husband, who built his following doing readings of like true horror, true crime kind of stories like this one. I was praying to God now silently in my head that he wouldn't find us. He'd been on the platform for a couple years, already had over a million subscribers, but he had never released music, never even really talked about it as far as I know. He was really just known as a YouTuber. And the big inflection point for him came over the summer this year when he did a stream of the game Among Us on PewDiePie's channel, along with a few other big YouTubers. Have you heard of Corpse? I think not. <laughs> and from what I can tell, the big thing was that everybody was like, holy shit, listen to that voice. And everyone just like fell in love with them from that stream. Today we're gonna be talking about a man who could literally beat me with his voice. <laughs> everybody from Pokimane to AOC has pretty much just shamelessly simped for it. And I mean, I guess I get it. That is a very sexy voice. Oh man, that we explain. <laughs> his I'll voice is so deep. Maybe I'd get more subscribers if I covered up my face. And sounded like that. There's a great video by Patrick CC that explains his whole story in a lot more detail. So if you're interested, I would suggest watching that. But the point is everybody went crazy for that sexy voice to the point that he went viral on TikTok with a picture of his hand holding the blue eyes white dragon card. Not his face, his hand. He released his first song in I think June. Fuck love like a mirror, yeah. Glass shatter gums bleed, the fucking never clear up. And in less than six months, his big song called E-Girls Are Ruining My Life with Savage Gasp, as of now, is sitting at 22 million streams, all thanks to that TikTok, YouTube kind of ecosystem and that dynamic of being an influencer slash creator who uses that platform as a springboard for their music. Again, if you want more detail on that, check out the Patrick CC video, it's great. Which brings us to Jaden. He's another artist who is a great example of that creator slash influencer turned musician who also blew up in that TikTok kind of ecosystem, but from a very different angle than Corpse. I haven't followed him as closely as Corpse, but from what I understand, he blew up on TikTok last year, essentially just for being like a ridiculously good looking kid who did the usual kind of like PG-13 Zoomer friendly skits that you see on TikTok all the time. Take a bath, dude. You're not cool. You're not cool. Cause I know you'd be getting it. If you got in the bag, then you had some bubbles. You'd be like. Then he got picked up by a management company and moved into one of those influencer houses in LA, which for anybody who's not aware is fucking huge. Like billions and billions of views a month. It's kind of like that MTV show, The Real World. It'll be like eight or 10 of these like Zoomer TikTokers living together and making content together, promoting each other, dating each other. There's just this like endless stream of content and gossip. Mads then blocked and unfollowed Cameron shortly after the song was released. And many think it's because of her relationship with Jaden. I'm not in his target audience, so his content doesn't really do a lot for me personally. And I'm kind of offended that his name is Jaden, like the ultimate Gen Z name. 
It just makes me think of some like Karen soccer mom yelling at her kids outside Panera. Jaden, Brayden, Kaden, get over here right now. You're in big trouble, mister. But I have to say he's great on camera, like clearly just a natural talent there. He seems like a smart kid and, and honestly his music is pretty fucking good. He's got a great voice. It's kind of that modern version of the 2000s pop punk sound that people like MGK and Nothing Nowhere are doing. Then based on his TikTok buzz, he got signed to Travis Barker's label DTA Records, put out his first single in spring, I think, and currently has over 100 million total streams on Spotify. Not bad for a musical career that's less than a year old, right? And so the question is, what does that mean for the rest of the music world? For everybody who's not a famous TikToker or YouTuber who doesn't have a beautiful face like Jaden or a ridiculously sexy voice like Corpse, what are we supposed to do with this? What can we learn from their success? But first, I wanna thank Lucy for sponsoring this video. They are on a mission to decrease the harmful effects of tobacco. We all know that smoking is bad for you and just generally a gross habit that makes you smell bad and ages your skin and does all kinds of other terrible things to you. But nicotine on its own is not responsible for those effects. And you don't have to actually smoke cigarettes to get that nicotine. I remember how hard it was for my dad to stop smoking when I was a kid. He's a tough dude and it was really difficult even for him. And I have to wonder how much easier would it have been for him if he could have just switched to Lucy. Of course, it would be better not to use nicotine at all, but if you're gonna go there, it's better to get it from gum than smoking or vaping, right? Their website is lucy.co, that's L-U-C-Y dot C-O. And if you use the code PUNK, you'll get 20% off all their products. And warning, the product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. A real bad bitch, pussy bollocks, the top of they used to hate me, now they want me, bitch, I feel like I'm gonna. Well, the first thing is, I've talked about this before, but I'm just gonna say it again because I think it's super important. Plain and simple, the future is solo artists like these guys, not bands. Can you think of the last band that blew up? Kind of doesn't really happen anymore. And these guys, of course, could have started bands and that's probably what they would have done 15 or 20 years ago, but they didn't. And why is that? For one, because social media is inherently more suited to solo artists than bands, especially TikTok, which right now is probably the most important platform for breaking new artists. It comes down to human psychology. We want to connect with individuals, not groups groups. This is why band accounts usually have really low shitty engagement compared to like the front person's personal account. Like I wouldn't want to follow the Beartooth account, but I'll definitely follow Caleb. Hey! I'm listening to Corpse, guys! And speaking of front men and front women, here is the cold hard truth. In 80 or 90% of bands, there's one person in the band who's the star who really just carries the whole thing. And honestly, everybody else in the band is pretty much just background. There are exceptions, of course, like Blink-182 or Avenged Sevenfold, where every member counts. But aside from that, if we reverse engineer the success of people like Corpse and Jaden, I think it shows us that there are really three critical pieces that you need to have. Number one, good music. This might seem obvious, but yes, you do need to have good music. There's a very long history of famous people putting out really shitty music in an attempt to kind of jumpstart their musical career and cash in on their following and failing spectacularly. For example, like Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian both put out music. Two of the most famous people of all time, and yet both of them flopped because their music was fucking horrible. Those are the guys I wanna take me for a ride. Or Jake Paul, who's trying very hard to be a rapper and it's just not gonna happen, I'm sorry. The point is, it doesn't matter how famous you are. If the music isn't there, game over. You can't force it. And as much as you might want to write off people like Corbs or Jaden as annoying social media people with no talent, if we're being objective, their music is pretty fucking good. The big thing to me is lore. This is the really key piece of the puzzle to me. They're a character with a story, just like there is around Luke Skywalker or Harry Potter or Black Widow or whatever. What I've realized is that rock artists have it backwards. They think that you capture an audience's interest with the music and then they become interested in you as a human and a personality. But that is the exact opposite of how it works in the social media era. Now, the way it works is they become interested in you as a human first, and then they get interested in your music. For example, Corpse has this whole backstory that revolves around mystery. 
like I said, he doesn't show his face. Nobody knows his name. Like he's just this enigmatic voice behind a YouTube channel. So everyone's asking like, who is this guy? Why doesn't he show his face? Is he like secretly really ugly or maybe he's gorgeous? Is his voice really that deep? Because we don't have his face, we must use his hand. It's such a great story that there's like a whole corner of YouTube of people making videos about it, speculating about all those things that get millions and millions of views, which then makes the mystery seem that much more compelling, which then makes people speculate even more about it, which then all continues the cycle of hype. There's this TikTok going around of people thinking like, it's, it's me. This is exactly the same thing as what you saw happen in the beginning of Ghost or every time Slipknot gets a new member, like the Tortilla Man or whatever. How many views do people get speculating about his identity? Or in Jaden's case, the lore revolves around his personal life. Kind of like the celebrity gossip sort of dynamic. Like, who's he dating? Is he really gonna go to jail for getting caught with weed? Did he really try to kill himself in high school? Did he get curved by Mads? Mads Lewis and Jaden Hostler have been spotted once again after what occurred last week. Now, I don't give a shit about any of that and probably nobody watching this does either. I'm guessing you guys aren't big on like TikTok gossip drama tea scene and I'm certainly not, but that's okay because we are not his audience and his audience definitely does care about it. It gives them something to talk about. It helps them get to know him more, all of which makes them more emotionally invested in his music. As another couple examples of this, Joji, formerly known as the YouTuber Filthy Frank, I actually didn't know that until a couple months ago, or Oliver Tree, whose music is definitely good, but I think without the whole like persona he's built up around that with his haircut and all that, wouldn't be nearly as big as it is. And it's tempting to say that this is all like a new thing that's because of social media and it's ruined music, but this is not a new thing at all. We've always been drawn to artists with lore. Think about all the lore around Metallica, for example. The Dave Mustaine beef, Cliff Burton dying, people hating St. Anger, the Napster lawsuit. It's all part of why we care about Metallica. Or as a newer example, Ronnie Radke. He's got a ton of lore to work with. I mean, going to prison, his beef with Escape the Fate, dating Paige from WWE, his frequent Twitter beefs, and it's no surprise that he's crushing it. I ain't even got friends, feel like everyone's fake. Really praying for the day the Reaper take me away. And I really just don't see much of this in newer rock and metal bands. There are some exceptions like Sleep Token, but generally speaking, there's just so few big personalities and hardly any bands that have any kind of interesting lore around them. They're just kind of dudes who look like they'd work at a vegan restaurant or be the bartender at like whatever hipster bar. And I really struggle to think of a single interesting thing about them as humans, which probably says good things about them as people, but that's a problem in the entertainment industry where your job is to get attention. And speaking of attention, the third key to success here is the ability to plug into existing streams of attention. To use a fishing analogy, if the music and the lore are the hook and the bait, well, you gotta go fishing somewhere to catch an audience. I look like Joe Rogan, you're a fucking idiot. And you do that by understanding where people are already allocating their attention and putting yourself there, plugging into these existing streams of attention. For Corbs, his success actually makes perfect sense if you look at it through this framework. He plugged into multiple huge attention streams. On his YouTube channel, it was the true crime horror kind of thing, which has blown up in the last few years, especially among women. There's like a whole industry of true crime podcasts, for example. He also plugged into the viral success of the video game Among Us, and also the e-boy, e-girl kind of trend, which is absolutely huge, especially on TikTok. And so if you put all those things together, that's a huge wave of attention that he was able to ride. And for Jaden, it was that whole like hype house, influencer house, TikTok gossip drama world that he plugged into by physically moving to LA and moving into one of those Zoomer influencer houses and doing collabs with all kinds of other huge TikTokers like Dixie D'Amelio, for example. I feel like a celebrity on yeah. this. I'm not kidding. I mean, you're following up Trippy Red, so. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Who's one of the biggest people on TikTok. Anything that she does is gonna get millions and millions of eyeballs from people that are 100% in his target audience, which which basically is like Gen Z girls. And again, this might seem like a new thing, but it's not at all. It's always been this way. For example, like Blink-182 and New Found Glory broke out by getting on TRL, which back in the 90s and 2000s, that was the attention stream that you would use to get the attention of that same audience that's now on TikTok watching Dixie D'Amelio or whoever. Avenged Sevenfold got a big boost by plugging into the Call of Duty scene 
also a huge attention stream. Fall Out Boy were already growing, but they became truly mainstream, partly by Pete Wentz plugging into the celebrity gossip Perez Hilton kind of scene of the mid 2000s. So this dynamic has always been there. It's just that now, instead of it happening on TV or in magazines or whatever, it's on TikTok and YouTube and Twitch. This is what you call longevity, guys. This is why I'm still here. And again, rock bands are mostly just kind of sitting this one out and it makes no sense to me. They're not plugging into any of those attention streams. They're not part of any larger cultural moments like Corpse and Jaden are, or like the bands I mentioned were in the 2000s. And lastly, once you've got the audience's attention, you gotta find a way to stay there. You gotta give them something to talk about so they remember you, and putting out a generic music video a couple times a year and then an album every other year is just not gonna cut it. I think a big part of the reason why rap is so popular is because rappers are incredibly good at this. For better or worse, they kind of live their lives like it's one big reality show. Takashi 6 9 being the ultimate example of this. You don't think telling people to suck your dick online got anything to do with it too? They're always getting in legal trouble, they talk shit in interviews and social media, and there's this whole like media industry around hip hop gossip and drama which obviously creates more interest for their music. And again, this is not new. Blink-182 was great at doing this in the 2000s. They were always doing awards shows. They had these funny videos that people would talk about. They did cameos in movies like American Pie. Travis had his reality show. And speaking of Travis, he's probably done a better job than anybody else from that era of making himself relevant now by collaborating with pretty much everybody cool who's up and coming. A lot of the artists I talk about on this channel, whether you like them or not, Five Finger Death Punch are also really good at this. They're consistently in the headlines for some sort of drama related to Ivan or for saying something controversial in one of their songs. And as for Corpse and Jaden, we'll have to see. Can they keep the hype train going or do they just have a viral moment and then they'll fade away? I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. And again, there are exceptions like the people I mentioned, but generally speaking, I think rock and metal is just completely failing at this. Hardly any of those artists do or say anything that would keep their name in the audience's mind. I mean, with all due respect, what is there really to talk about with say, the Amity Affliction or State Champs? Because in today's world of super short attention spans where even watching a 30 second TikTok feels like a big ask, if you don't bust your ass to stay relevant, you're gonna get forgotten fast. But I wanna do like hella shit. So I'm gonna start making clothes and I wanna start acting. You Absolutely. can do like everything at once. Like really? you can do music, you can do social media, you can do YouTube, you can do acting. So to sum it all up, the rise of artists like Corpse and Jaden really drives home a lot of the trends that we've been seeing for a while. Trends that increasingly make me feel like rock artists are just kind of letting the world pass them by and I don't understand it. The one big exception there, which gives me a little bit of hope, is all the artists like Nothing Nowhere, Ghost Mane, Youngblood, Mod Sun, and MGK, who all kind of sit on the edge of rap and alternative rock. Although sadly, the rock establishment seems to gatekeep the fuck out of those artists. As usual, a big part of the rock world is rejecting the people who are actually keeping the genre relevant, but that's nothing new, so we can't be surprised. And for everybody who's clinging to the past, thinking that the model of four generic, unremarkable dudes with guitars who put out an album every two years and don't really do social media, I don't know what to say. I think it's gonna be rough for them, but good luck. I got a fucking, death, got a fucking date with that. Timmy, Timmy, please, I'm trying to wrap something edgy. All right, my friends, that does it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about Corpse and Jaden, and in general about this model of the creator slash influencer who then uses that platform to boost their career as a musician. Before I let you go, I wanted to mention the Punk Rock NBA newsletter. It comes out every week with links to any of the content that I put out, as well as what I am reading and watching and listening to. So if you wanna sign up for that, there's a link to that in the description. I also wanna thank everybody who supports us on Patreon, especially those of you who support us at the true cult level or above. It is because of your support that we're able to do a lot of things, but especially the podcast, because of the patrons that I was able to hire our producer and editor who makes the whole thing happen. So thank you very much. I'm very grateful for that. And if you would like to support us on Patreon, you can also do that at the link in the description. And with that, I'm gonna sign off for now, but I will see you next time.